Welcome to DaggerCast. It is I, Lindsay Charles, uh, one of your co-hosts, and uh, I guess now real host. Uh, I am a lover of horror and the lead singer of The Cell Phones. Either you've never heard of us or you love us a lot. Um, so things are a little uh, different around here, as you can see. Um, it appears uh, as though it's just me and it's daylight. What? Um, usually uh, we do our interviews at night, which means I can't be up in my own office because my kid is sleeping. Um, so here we are. Um, so our wonderful, lovely co-host, Brian Kirst, man of my dreams, uh, who in late 2018 told me, hey, how about we do a podcast where we talk about racial and cultural representation and horror? And I just said yes, because I wanted to so badly. Um, he is extremely busy with all of the writing work that he's doing. Um, I think the podcast format is just not his bag right now, which is A-OK. -okay. We love him so much. And we are just, I don't know, we want to encourage him to do whatever he wants. Um, he is uh, really uh, got some got some special moves in the works, um, and whenever he has uh, some writing out, uh, he will absolutely let us know, and we will relay that information to you. Um, we love him so much, and um, you know, I still definitely keep tabs on him uh, all the time, and and get his kind of opinion on uh, on movies that have come out. So it's very important for me to stay in touch with him. He was my encyclopedia for uh, horror. Um, so now it's just me, solo, terrified just a little bit, but also kind of excited. Uh, me and our production manager, Jared, are very, very like uh, committed to just keep, keep it going. So um, if you have any feedback or if you have any suggestions for the new dagger cast please let me know um you can email us at uh daggercastinfo at gmail.com uh and uh i just want to start off uh you know the whole episode by just cutting into a couple um movies that i really enjoyed uh it's been a while so just kind of want to go into that um I really need you to go on Hulu and watch the movie Prey. It's the new Predator film. Um, it is really, really great. Uh, I, I very much loved it. Everything that like Antlers did wrong with um, taking an indigenous story uh, and just kind of having one indigenous guy walk in and explain everything and then walk right out. Um, Prey does amazing. It's literally an entire indigenous cast they are the main character. They are driving the story. They are taking on the predator. Like it is amazing. Uh, there also, I believe, is a Comanche dub that you can literally like watch the entire movie in Comanche if you want. So, ain't that freaking cool? Um, we didn't think it could be done, but here it is being done. So, anytime I see a movie that just does indigenous cultures poorly, I'm just gonna point at this movie and be like, look, it can be fucking done, and probably for cheap. So, like stop do better um so that was really good um i really enjoyed the movie barbarian uh which we will talk about in this episode very much so um maybe go watch that movie before you come back it's on hbo now literally you don't even have to go to the theater anymore so it's on hbo um please watch it do not read anything about it really good movie um as a horror lover it it really was a, a it was just a bomb um anyway uh smile was also a really good movie um not as good as barbarian i think but definitely like just oh 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 a treat terrifying um i love when people creepy smile so it was really really a nice uh movie for me and maybe we'll talk about that in another episode um i really am enjoying or i enjoyed the uh the tv series on apple severance it's not necessarily a horror a little bit more like a like a sci-fi but um there is a really cute little uh, homoerotic uh, like relationship thing that happens between John Turturro and Christopher Walken, which like that was just really cute to watch. Um, uh, also, please go get Shutter number one, and then watch Queer for Fear, which is a kind of like a documentary series just about uh, queer creators talking about horror movies. Uh, they go very far back. They go as far back as Mary Shelley, who was pretty queer herself, uh, Bram Stoker also queer oscar wilde queer as hell like you know so it's 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 really cool to kind of listen to um queer creators talk about this kind of like just what horror has done for them and 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 uh 
how horror relates to them. Uh, really, really good. Uh, we talk about it in the episode as well. So um, that's basically that. And um, the episode is basically me and uh, an interview with me and Morgan Manassa. Um, she is a company member of Babes with Blades. Uh, she just recently directed a show, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, recently. Um, and we talk about that quite a bit. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have her on. And uh, it, it was a pleasure talking to her. And here it is. Here's our interview. Enjoy. Yay! All right, it's you, Morgan Manassa. It's so wonderful to see you. It's nice to see you, Lindsay. Yeah, Thanks for having me. I, thank you. Uh, I see you enough on Instagram, um, so <laughs> it's really nice to actually be talking to you. Um, yeah. The second I saw you t- uh, bring up Barbarian, the, the second I was like, wait a minute, she'd be great to talk to. <laughs> um, so, great. uh some backstory about how we met um so we were it was it was spanks you very much right yeah that what, okay good because i was like if it was before that i'm so sorry um but just for backstory for for those listening um me and morgan were in a really cool show where it was basically us and like 40 plus women like doing this crazy dance and like my character was trying to get into a beautiful dress and <laughs> the whole thing was just uh, it was like a fever dream of shapewear um is all i can describe it as but uh what a wonderful experience and i'm so glad that i still am friends with at least half if not more than that whole cast yeah yeah it's wild how like still get to see what everybody is doing and like how lives have changed since then like people are getting married having babies and all of that you know yeah, absolutely. Or like changing jobs or like uh doing whole other theater things. Um like I know that you I know that you were involved with uh with Babes with Blades way be- like way before that all happened, right? Yeah. So Oh yeah. Yeah, I've been a company member since 2007. So like coming up on like my 15 year anniversary. Woohoo! That's yeah, hard. Sixteen, something like that. Anyway. Yeah, that's that amazing. A long time. That's amazing. No, that that's so cool. Um, I, and I know the thing that you just recently directed was not a Babes with Blades thing, but or was it? Or was no, it? it was with uh, Idol Muse Theater Company. Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you do a lot of this? Was uh, you uh, you were I'm I'm I you can explain this yourself if you want, but I know that you <laughs> directed uh, recently directed a production of Jekyll and Hyde. Um. Yeah. Do you nor do you normally direct? This is the third full length play that I've directed. Um, yeah. Prior to that, I I directed a in the next room or the vibrator play with Idol Muse. Nice. Um, which opened in March of 2020 and then closed in March of 2020. Oh, so it was a uh, that one still kind of hurts because I was really proud of that one. It was really good. Um, awesome. But Jack and Hyde, also really fucking proud of it. Um, we uh, the. The main difference with with this version, this adaptation, is that Jekyll is a woman. Like, cool. not not like Doctor Jekyll can be played by a woman. Is actually written to be a woman, right? Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, so it talks about a lot of this particular version. Like, really examines like who the patriarchy benefits and oppresses, and how, and uh, and it's just my kind of horror. I love it. Oh, that's amazing. That yeah. that because um. I've I've been I've been thinking about Jekyll and Hyde a lot recently because it's like oh that's a you forget sometimes that that is a horror thing you know like yeah. even even though it was a very old story um, that it was a little terrifying for the people who read it or you know saw it in the beginning okay. um, yeah and and I was trying to figure out like because I so in like our design conversations and everything I I was like I want to play with this idea of like saturation how like the patriarchy is everywhere and how we're just like steeped in it so how can we communicate that design wise and um one of the ideas that I threw out there was as far as like lighting and sound I, I wanted to have like like basically synthesi- 
synthesized music. So we had like dark synth music for like the whole thing. We had these super saturated neon lights, very like a la neon demon kind of Ooh. aesthetic. <laughs> and I must have heard from like 20 people throughout the last month, like, how can I buy the soundtrack? Where is that available? <laughs> like, well, we'll have to get a playlist together or something because it was banging. It was Who did the did somebody do the music or did you just kind of pick uh things? my my lighting designer is just the best and has like everything at his fingertips and just found like this great playlist on Spotify. And then I think he pulled most of it from there. But yeah, he's so to, cool. We just combine it all into one Jekyll and Hyde list so we can like give it to the masses. Cause I love it. Yeah. Put that on. Yeah. I would absolutely listen to that playlist for sure. I now um, go to sleep with like the beats in my head. I'm like, I need, I need to think of something else. I need nice. to, some other song needs to go through here now. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, So I, I just recently finished Shudder did this whole like documentary series called Queer for Fear. Yes yes i just finished it too oh my god so like it's so funny because when we first started Daggercast, it was like a handful of years ago um shutter was still shutter was around yeah. and i am not i'm not being paid by shutter to say this but they are they're killing it they're 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 seriously like becoming such an inclusive and wonderful streaming service and this is just one of those things where at first i was like oh no is this just gonna be like I mean, uh, not that I don't love drag queens, but I didn't want it to just be like, oh my God, this movie, she's yeah. wearing a cool outfit. Like, I didn't want it to just be very like basic, like we're going to get drag queens on and they're going to talk about horror. Like as much right. as I would love to hear that, I wanted it to have some substance and my God. So they we they went in on like talking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde about how that was kind of like an allegory for being queer. Um and how it was basically like, you know, they were never saying that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde like were separate things. They were a part of the same person, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and how we all do that. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, but yeah, I seriously shudder, like they existed when we started this, this thing, but the, like what they're doing with different, like, I don't know. They're basically, I, I feel like they basically not to toot my horn, like they listened to the show and they were like, well, we need to do that. And it, it's almost like, like we literally like made these things side by side and Shudder has just become so inclusive and they still have like, you know, the old standbys of horror, but they're just bringing these new things in and these new ideas from these new creators who are queer um, mm -hmm. and, and people of color. And it's just blowing my mind. So yeah, it was really interesting, especially when I was saying that I wanted to interview you watching queer for fear and and hearing dr jekyll and mr hyde be brought up i thought oh well what a perfect um yeah it, it's so funny and it was cool like kind of what you were you were kind of also taking it in a different way so it's amazing how dr jekyll and mr hyde again these really like simple horror stories can be like vessels for other things like the patriarchy and women mm -hmm. and oh, you yeah. know the ideas of being a secret self inside of a uh, you know, being an animalistic inside and having like a, you know, like a, the mask you present to everyone else. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah and, I, and, and like how you, like, when is the moment that you decide to let people see the, the other part of you or both of you at the same time, like that duality. And, that, and that's yeah. one thing that we um, played with in, in the show as well, is that there's moments where Jekyll and Hyde are both on stage at the same time talking to one person. And we were like, all right, <laughs> It was a question that I often got throughout the whole process from everybody. I was like, how am I seeing both of them? Are we seeing both of them at the same time? How is this working? I'm like, so we're gonna we're gonna create a rule of the world <laughs> that this potion that Dr. Jekyll has created gives them her and Hyde the ability to decide when they are seen by people at the same time. Oh. And how like the control and the power that they get from that. And that, uh, in those moments, like looking back on it, just led to some very terrifying encounters. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and even like listening, like watching Queer for Fear really kind of made me think also like, oh, how can I equate like Dr. Jekyll to, to me and, and, and that kind of that idea of duality and stuff. And, and I feel that a lot when, you know, uh, 
with PMDD, like when I when I have premenstrual dysphoric disorder and I feel like uh, there's like a me that everybody is used to seeing. But then uh, during the times where my brain doesn't like the way my hormones are moving, uh, the inside of me is a, is a completely different person, even to me, which is kind of equally, that's just like the scary part. Yeah. But like, um, it is interesting, like, because sometimes it hurt, it almost like hurts to like be with people and have to present the the one self that is the normal when I'm not feeling very well and yeah. and so I, I literally like will fall apart like I'll I'll eventually like start like I'll I'll like quietly go cry somewhere like to get out of like being seen yeah. um and then by the time we're home like Ryan is like the only guy that's like just 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 stop be you know be who you need to be and then I'm just like, Bruh! you know, and, and just like, like fully exploding. And then, yeah. you know, uh, he sees that for a little bit. And then I take a Xanax and go to sleep. Like it's, it, it feels like that sometimes. And now that I have a toddler, it also feels like I have this pleasant child that is a perfect, wonderful kid. And just every now and again, she's just like, I hate everything. Like, and it's, and it's, and she doesn't even get it, you know? She's yeah. just really frustrated at the situation, whether it be, I don't want to poop in the toilet, or, but, yeah. I w- but you said I had, you said I could have a sticker. I don't understand. Like, and then she just yep. freaks out. So it is, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, a much, like much, ho- like a lot of horror. Um, it is something that I think, I don't know. We say horror is made for straight white men all the time. Um, but like, this is like a story that I feel like you can really like equate with just anybody and anything. Mm-hmm. Um, because we all feel, we all do it deep down. And if you're, if you're being honest, like, you know, we all do, we all show different parts of ourselves to different people. Um, yeah. and you choose the people who you get to oh, yeah. be your wildest self with, I guess. So <laughs> who don't um, uh, judge your Mr. Hyde when he comes out exactly exactly and doesn't like doesn't freak out and and run away from it and and that's and that's love isn't it that is love (laughs) that's how i yeah um yeah i i I feel like just as a a springboard of what you were saying about like i feel like horror is becoming less and less about white guys yeah (laughs) to my utter delight because it's like yay i get to see some some stuff that I want to watch. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, um, have, have, did you see the movie Saint Maud? I have not seen Saint Maud yet. Ooh. I'm a little scared. A hundred percent. It's terrifying. Number one. Number two, though, that was like definitely like a movie I watched where I was like, this is not about a, a man at all. Like, there's no, yeah. there's no straight white man that 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 this is even remote. Like, there's not even a character worthy of remembering his name because there just aren't characters that are men and it's like the greatest it to me it's wonderful because it's very like personal it's very internal horror but but it's really uh it's really cool um i guess also on my love list that we have to talk about and i'm warning you all there are going to be spoilers about the movie spoilers i have all these notes i'm ready to go the movie barbarian is is at this moment in time my one of it's in my top three best horror movies i've seen this year i was so glad i got to see it in theaters and mm-hmm. i'm so glad i didn't watch a damn trailer i knew nothing me too the only cool. thing i knew was i had one i have one other friend who has seen it she posted it on instagram and was like the hype is real don't read anything don't watch don't watch don't learn anything about this movie just go i was like oh i trust yeah. you okay and 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 we were like literally from the all I knew was that they were like a, an Airbnb gets double booked. That's all I heard. That's and all I, I was like, I was like, okay, that sounds fun. Mm-hmm. And and it really did from the very beginning just try to take you in one direction and show you go. This is where it is. Bill Skarsgård's going to be a creepy boy, and then it's <gasps> like, ah, like just oh yeah, like from moment like just just yeah that it's like misdirection after misdirection, and it starts with seeing Bill Skarsgård and you like literally like he's literally the first shot of him is through a veiled window so it's like still obscured and kind of off and everything and then it's Bill Skarsgård and you're like all right and he's and then as it goes on you're like okay is he just like the is he the woke dude or is he like genuinely 
caring about like not freaking out this woman right yeah. luckily, luckily well not luckily for him later, but, <laughs> but, yeah, but we- for him to actually be like a good human was the first surprise <laughs> Yeah, and I loved that they even did the thing where she, you know, she goes in and she takes a picture of his, uh, of his license plate, which I'm like, smart girl, but yeah. like even the license plate looked kind of like, like mean. But then, mm-hmm. as I'm like thinking about it later, I'm like, everybody's license plate or everybody's license picture on their on their driver's license looks really like either Ryan looks like a hardened criminal, like my husband is the cutest little boy, and he looks like a, like a like a mean guy. And mm-hmm. so that that made me giggle that I was like, wow, I really put a lot of stock in the fact that that picture was menacing. Like, <laughs> you know, like everyone is questionable in their driver's license picture. Yeah. Also, my I think my favorite part of that whole movie was that this lady, this this poor woman, the mother. Uh, no, no, the yes. the yes. yeah, the 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 main chick whose yeah. name I don't remember now. Yes. Um. Tess Marshall. I only know this because I literally just watched it like two hours ago because as of today, it's on HBO Max. So It's on HBO Max. Go see it right now. I'm go serious. Pause this. Go watch it. Listen Come to back. this later. Um, yeah. But yeah, T- Tessa, she is like, um, she, you know, she does like the movie starts with her being like pursued, like by a man on the phone. Mm-hmm. And somebody's like calling her and calling her. And she tells the, the whole story about to Bill Skarsgård where she's like, Oh, you know they keep coming back. Like it's because I'm I'm always that girl that comes back. I just I just I just always come back, and so that was amazing because at first it just sounded like she was just saying some like innocent thing about her love life, but then in the end you realize that this woman won't leave these men who are like in trouble, and she keeps trying to save people, and every single time she would run back in that house. I would sc- I was like, yeah. no, like, why are you doing it? Especially, especially not to jump too far ahead, but especially once like Justin Long comes in the picture and you're just like, don't, don't save that guy. Yeah. Don't say for him, please. That man doesn't deserve a single, a single thing. Um, yeah, it really, yeah, that like, uh, yeah, even even like at the very, I guess we, I mean, we can literally go however we want. We're t- we're talking about this, but even yep. at the end, even till the very end, like she was, she was, she was trying to save everyone. To the like, she almost got attacked by the cops. She almost got, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like she she literally risked life and limb every single time. And then at the very end, he was like, oh well. Oh, and also, like, what she gets shot, like, by him. Well, yeah. He he gets because he uh because AJ Justin Long's character is reactionary and has a gun and just shoots blankly, uh, you know, blindly into the dark where she's standing. She's right still, in the stomach. Yeah, and still, it's it's like she is trying to save him to a point where even he's like, oh, we're on top of this uh what water tower or something, and yeah. he's like, you're not going to make it, so later and like throws her off the building so that scary baby mama lady would would yep. would uh would would save her and does and like it... literally dives off of the water tower after her oh my I, God. I can't tell you how many times i've come to my i've gone to my own child and gone bar 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 it's terrible I do to my partner and my cat like 12 times a day now <laughs> it's so good oh, oh, uh, yeah and my, when we were actually when we were watching it just now my partner actually pointed out that um aj like not only does aj like throw her off the roof but like throws her off by her hair like he's so he's so selfish and desperate to save himself it doesn't even matter he's just like yeah it it's so and, and that was like literally to to watch her in the end walk away from all of that was an absolute like was was wonderful to see but man i wanted to hit her in the head i really wanted to like i wanted to be like this had better have taught you a lesson i swear to god like i want to see a barbarian too where someone else is in trouble and she's like oh like i gotta get him like and i was be like Like barbarian too Mm, better not yeah (laughs) barbarian too or she like looks like or or maybe she has like a single cameo where it's just her looking at something like somebody in trouble and she's like Mm-mm, not doing no. that <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> just 
<laughs> drives on or something. That would be wonderful. Oh gosh. Oh. But yeah, I, I did love that idea. Like it was very um I don't wanna say it was like gendery, but it was very like they they told us this little thing about someone and then that literally took that was like her through line the whole way through. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um I really liked it was it was amazing the jumps that they did where literally like something crazy would happen like Bill Skarsgård getting his head exploded and then Justin Long in a car like Speaking singing really along. To do tabby. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that I love how it's like I love how it's in three acts. And when that second act happens with with when we introduce Justin Long and singing Ricky Tickety Tavi along the California shoreline, it's just like, what? How did we get here? And how is yeah. we, how are we how are we going to get back to Tess? I don't understand. Right? That. Yeah, exactly. I was like, help, because um, I yeah. really was concerned for her. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I liked just like, uh, I forget when Justin Long is in a horror movie that this is where he's from. Like, mm-hmm. like he did, he did, he did a, a Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. When he was like, I think that was before he was even a Mac, you know, like before he was doing those, those commercials. Right. Um, and, and I remember being like, dude, this guy's acting is terrible. This guy's never going to amount to anything. And, <laughs> and here he is. Yeah, here he is. And I love it. Like he he plays such a dick so well like like yeah. like tusk like like he basically is reprising his role in the mm-hmm. movie tusk sans being turned into a walrus yeah oh, um movie. yeah oh. <laughs> mr tusk yeah. um, <laughs> it's funny my because again it's awesome to be with my partner so we just talked about it nonstop, and and they were like it is justin long an asshole <laughs> he's so good like he's is he really like that I'm like I don't think he is I think he's nah. actually just really good at being a douchebag like yeah. I think it I almost feel like it he almost looks like he's having a fun time doing it yeah so yeah I would love to ask like dude like you're not like this in real life like do you just love playing this kind of guy like this second he they were in that bar and the guy's like, just tell me, man, did you do it, man? Did you do it? And then he like went on that whole, like, your dude is persistent. Like I was like, yeah! like that was like, and I like how they, they didn't make it. Um, They didn't make it as though he was to be the villain from the very beginning. Like when that call comes in, he's just kind of like, Oh, Oh no. Like, at, like realizing I think in that moment he he legitimately had no idea that he had done anything wrong. Oh, yeah. Um so that like I liked the way that that was played um cuz I feel like when we I also just love that this was not a movie about about being canceled. It just watched a man be canceled like and <laughs> and that had to cancel himself as well. Yeah. It's yeah. like he just he never he like just didn't have like a like that but that wasn't the story uh because i feel like yeah. and still now even after like the me too movement and all that i do feel like a lot of times if there's going to be a movie in which someone is canceled that's usually the whole thing that's usually the only thing the movie is about so this was really nice and again i feel like horror is the only place that can do this but yeah. it it made it made the canceling not necessarily the main part of the story it just kind of helped reveal a part of someone's character that yeah. then in a high level trauma situation they show their ass and show just how how uh how how, how terrible they are oh, yeah. um which i think that's what horror is good for it's good to showing you the the real you when met with a, a terrible situation um yeah and there's even like that another moment of like misdirection with him at the very end where he has like that very short monologue about like am I a bad person? I don't think I'm a bad person. Maybe I'm a good person who just did a bad thing. Like, I can't really be a bad person. I'm trying to do better, blah, blah, blah. And then he throws Tess off of the water tower by her hair. Totally. And you think, like, and even, like, yeah, he has that whole, like, I think, and I, I really enjoy that part, too. I completely forgot about that, where where he does, like, kind of wrestle with himself about that, seeing a man, literally being in a man's bedroom where he, like, watches videos of the guy and he's like oh that guy's fucking sick like yeah right. i didn't do that did i do it? i don't know and then yeah then obviously by the end we're just like oh you 
you are you are mm-hmm. terrible mm-hmm. um also there were a lot of really good funny bits and again like they they played with and and, and not in a way that was very like there was like a there was like a scene in like the last scream um mm-hmm. i don't remember which one the last one um where there's like a whole scene where that like blonde guy's like walking around and he's just like getting stuff and there just keeps being the door scare where yeah. you're thinking someone's going to be behind the door which i thought was hilarious and wonderful but i almost feel like barbarian did that kind of shit but on a whole nother like subtle level mm-hmm. um i think that there was a lot of like when that guy when the other guy uh, who who seems to know the area is like, mm. oh, I've been here for 15 years and she never, she never bugs me. And she just runs right into the room. She literally Kool-Aid mans through the wall <laughs> and then rips his arm off and beats him <laughs> with it. Like... And it's just so like, it, it's kind of like, I mean, we all should have seen it coming, but it just happened so fast that I wasn't even able to be like, like if they'd have let that sit for three more seconds, everyone in the audience would have been like, oh, but she's going to come in though. And I love how that movie never let you have a moment yeah, of like comfort of well, like, oh, I know where this horror movie is going. So to that, I, cause I was watching YouTube videos to prepare for today. <laughs> <laughs> And someone pointed out, they like were talking about a interview with the director and, and he also wrote it. And apparently he didn't have an outline. He didn't know where he was going to go with it. So he bas- he literally just wrote it moment by moment. What do I want to happen next? What follows that? And then, then what? And you can, and you can see that in absolutely. The- and it works because every other moment is just like, what the fuck now? No, 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 no. <laughs> what are you doing oh this is happening now okay we're here exactly yeah that's so that makes so much sense because it really is just kind of like it's almost like you're yeah some guy's thinking about a horror movie and he's like but 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 over here in california this is happening and it's just like okay well let's just jump there let's just jump right right there i don't give a shit like let's do it and again i i feel like if you were to have sold this movie as like a thriller drama Mm-hmm. No one would every somebody would have looked at that director and been like, no, 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 friend. No, we will not be doing that. No. We will be doing linear time. The rock will be in it. And that that's it. And no one will care about it because it, it'll suck. But this was like, it, you know, I feel like horror at this point is becoming I feel like I think we're in a world where like horror is becoming art and art is becoming horror. And I really, I really appreciate that. Like, yeah. it's just it just makes me really happy. So um yeah i feel like i don't know like what like what horror do you like before this i suppose like what what really drew you to this um to loving this movie i suppose i mean it it had a lot going for it but i feel like what does this like what does this connect to movies that you normally like in horror um well i i tend to gravitate towards horror movies that are funny so there's that there well yeah that's perfect yeah (laughs) so like I think uh, I didn't really get into horror until I was in like my early 20s because my friends back home were like super into horror and my parents who I went to go see movies with up to that point don't like scary movies so um I came to it late (laughs) later in life um but like probably like Beetlejuice was my first sort of gateway into it right so so that level of humor and weirdness and a little bit of scary and then like the scream movies got into that i think halloween was the first one where i was like this is not funny <laughs> i mean funny about this. <laughs> it's but. definitely not and it's a different kind of like i feel like sometimes i watch like and i'll watch like an 80s horror And I'll, like, Mm -hmm. hear the things that, like, I remember my Aunt Jill saying to me because she was a teenager in the 80s. So, to me, it's kind of funny when I hear, like, you know, weird words or, like, silly, like, kind of 70s or 80s, like, humor. And I'm like, oh, ha ha. I guess I was funny to the boomers. That's that's cool. But, yeah, no, I... I I always cite like Rocky Horror as my my first foray into into like horror movies because I didn't you know again it's like one of those things where it's like kind of 
kind of funny, kind of spooky. Like, what's going on here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think also on that note, um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, like that movie, I saw that movie in the theater when it came out. I was like eight or nine. What? Yeah. Amazing. And, yeah. <laughs> My mom took me. <laughs> My mom's super cool. Um, but I mean, it's not really a horror movie, but it still has like those horror elements and it's definitely more of a, a comedy than anything. But like I maybe 10-ish years ago rewatched it and I was like, this is some feminist as fuck role model shit is what <laughs> this is. Um, and she, yeah, she's that. Elvira's a role model. Um, but like just the way that she like stands up for herself in that and she's like not ashamed of her body, not ashamed of her sexuality and she's got the dad puns for days and oh all my that. god. It's just great. Um it's it's true. It's almost like I feel like Elvira and like Freddy Krueger should like hang out because I feel like they had the same kind of silly the same kind of they had the same writer where it was just like cuz mm-hmm. Freddy had dad jokes but he also was terrifying and in your dreams. But like Yeah. I mean, Elvira was in my dreams in a different way, in yeah. a, mm-hmm. in a, in a, in a lovely way. Um, that, like, uh, it's funny. I feel like, like, how, how old are you? You don't have to, like, say your age, but no, I think. I, I just turned 42. I'm the, I'm the answer to the universe, apparently. So I feel like we're, we're the, yeah, so we're kind of in the same age bracket. I feel like when I was, like, nine or 10, I was watching, like, Mel Brooks movies. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like, full on. And, and I feel like nowadays like people would be like well those didn't age well so we will not be showing those to our children (laughs) yeah so it is kind of funny to like hear like you know your kid your parent i feel like i'm gonna be that kid that parent that's just like i don't know it's pg-13 i don't give a shit it's r i don't you're gonna if you have any questions just please talk to me (laughs) yes please please. you can watch this just remember you have to come talk to me afterwards (laughs) right um well we are we're at the two minutes uh please oh, wow. pl- I, isn't that crazy it's, these things happen so quickly and so lovely i i love i love ta- that's why i love talking um tell us uh what you what you got going in the future i know uh babes with blades has a, a new thing coming um anything else you got um right now uh yeah well, babes with blades is opening a new show called plaid as hell which is um as our artistic director Haley rice keeps referring to it as a a rom-com until it isn't Ooh. She, she, she i haven't seen audition but she likened it to that sort of format where it's like one like the first half of the story is one thing and then suddenly turns into something else so uh it's like some friends um go to a cabin in the woods one weekend and then there's a serial killer on the loose and other things happen and then justin long shows up singing ricky tiki tavi in a car yep. um yep Throwing people off the roof. Because now I feel like everything should end that way. Like, I feel like, or everything, like, if it gets too com- uncomfortable, just go to, just shoot to Justin Long in a car, and he'll just be like, hey, hey. time to sing. <laughs> and uh, it, but, but yeah, so Planet Cell opens um, on November 4th. We're, like, in tech and load in this week. Get ready for previews, and that's going to be up at the Factory Theater up in Rogers Park. Very so, cool. People can visit babeswithblades.org not dot com you'll find something different <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> it's a dot org guys you're gonna learn something dot org but yeah um other than that i'm just kind of catching up on sleep and i'm doing uh, an art fair in december so, lovely yeah. what's your what's your medium uh i'm a multiple multidisciplinary artist so i've got paintings and drawings and crochet and embroidery and oh lots of things i love your art i seriously do um whenever you share it on instagram i really appreciate it um if you ever are in the market for making shirts or sweaters um whenever you make them i really like them so name your name your price (laughs) at some point um i i would yeah so you know um but yes please catch up on sleep i know a post-production you need to take care of you. Yeah. I, I immediately get ill. So <laughs> I slept Just for 13 hours more. the other day. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Morgan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was fun. Bye. That was that was the interview. That was Daggercast. Um, 
thank you so much for watching, for listening, for whatever you're doing. I very much appreciate you, and um, I'll see you again. Thank <laughs> you.